Installing a bed leveling kit for your Ender 3 3D printer, it's coming up. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're gonna to be looking at installing this, which is the CR Touch Auto Leveling Kit on this, which is an Ender 3 3D printer. It is not the Pro, it's not the 5, it's not the whatever, it's just the bare bones Ender 3 3D printer. Now, if you have seen the other videos on this channel, you already have seen that we've installed the Dual Z Screw mod kit for this. We've already installed the 32-bit motherboard, which was required for us to install this CR Touch bed leveling kit. Now, if you've got an Ender 3 and you're wondering, how do I know if I have a 32-bit board? It's very easy to tell. If you look down here at your USB port, if your board uses a micro USB port, then good news, you have the 32-bit board and it will easily accept this mod without any other modifications. If you have a mini USB port on it, then unfortunately you have the 8-bit board. Now I had the 8-bit board on here, and this is it right here, so I'll pull this out. If your board looks like this, or if without opening it up, if you've got this little mini USB port right here, when you look at the front of your control board, then you have the 8-bit board. The 8-bit board does not actually have the provision, which would be right here, for the CR Touch to be installed. There's no great way to install it on this board. The easiest thing is to do a board swap, which we've done already in a different video. If you have this 8-bit board, all is not lost. It costs you about $50 for the upgraded board. You can swap it in yourself easily. I show you how in a different video. Now, first off, why would you need this device and how exactly does it work? The CR Touch is actually a device that allows you to automatically level your bed so that your 3D prints come out perfect every single time, no matter how good or bad you are at leveling your bed. Now, I've used the bed leveling code where you go through with a piece of paper and slide it around and I've leveled the bed pretty good. And I've even when I've been like super strict with my bed leveling, I still manage to be out a little bit one way or another. And that's where something like this comes in. As you will see, this adds a little sensor to the side of our print head, which allows us to really have the system figure out the actual positioning of the bed and then adjust the Z axis to allow for that bed misalignment. So even if your bed is misaligned, it makes the print head aligned to the bed. So no matter what, you get a straight, perfect print. It costs about $50. It's not expensive, especially if you use this for taller prints. So what I noticed was I was able to do prints that were up to about two to three inches tall without a lot of issue. Once I went taller than three inches, like once I got up to about here, they would start to lean or I'd have gaps in kind of the layers, which were very, very clear and this should fix that problem. So let's do a quick unboxing, see what you get in the package. So we're gonna open it up here. You get some instructions, which are full color. They're pretty detailed actually, as I'm looking at this. I haven't really looked at these. It does show you where you need to connect this on your board and if you have the right board. And it will also walk us through the firmware update, which we will have to do, but I'm gonna do that in this video anyway. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Then it's got this guy here, which is one bracket. It's all packed in foam. This is the actual module itself. And then let's see if I pop this guy out, if I can get. It's got two more brackets. And then depending on the model you're installing it on, those brackets will be used or not used. It's got a wiring harness. We've got some screws in a package and we've got some tie wraps and that is it. We've also got this guy, which I don't know what this is reality okay this is it there's not a whole lot to it this little device obviously is going to attach next to our print head so the next thing we need to do is actually i'm going to unplug my power supply from this now i think this is the adapter that we need because that's what i think that's why that's why i think it's the adapter that we need and the reason i think so is because if i look here 
how that goes on, it's gonna line up with those screws right there. Before you put it on though, you do want to mount this head onto the adapter, and there's only one way to do it. Well, there's not, there's two ways to do it, but as you'll see, there's a little notch here, and the wiring harness needs to go through here. So if I put this this way, the wiring harness will be out of the way. If I flip this over and I do it this way, you can see that the bracket will easily cover the wiring harness. So you wanna make sure you do it the right way, which will be this way. We also, when we get our screws out here, so we're gonna open these up. Now, if you have the tool kit that came with your 3D printer, then you will have the right size Allen key for this. If you don't, well, then you're tough out of luck, actually. Now, the adapter is threaded, which means we need to go through the print head. So I'm gonna stick one screw into the head like that, and then I'm gonna screw it into the body like this. So that is one. Next, I'm gonna get the other one. I'm gonna stick that on like this. Oh. Once you get them both started, then you can just cinch those down all the way, which we're gonna do now. Okay, and then we're gonna give them a good cinching just to make sure that they're nice and tight. I don't want them coming loose for some reason, because that'll affect how well this thing works. Like that, okay. Next thing to do would be to mount it onto here. So I'm going to, it's probably using the same screw head there. It is, excellent. So we'll loosen that guy, we'll loosen this guy. Now you wanna do this with the power off because if the fan turns on, it would kinda suck. It does come with new screws if you lose these ones but you should be able to reuse the ones that you got with your printer, no problem. So there's one off, there's two off. Now, what you're gonna notice is this cover is gonna wanna come right off like that. That's okay. We want this to be flush and tight to here, and then the cover over top, like that. So, I'm gonna put this back on and get ready. This is always hard to do on camera, Okay, it actually was a pain in the butt to get the second one in, so I did that one first, and now I'll put the top one in, because that one should be a lot easier to do. Just, it wasn't lining up very well. Now the hardware's been mounted, you can see it right here, and all this is gonna do is make it so that when the bed drops, this little plunger here detects the bed height. But before it can do that, we need to get this wiring run. Now this wiring, I've seen people try to run this before. It's a pain in the butt. I think I know a secret way to make it run a lot easier. We're gonna see if my secret way is gonna work. So we're gonna move that out of the way. First thing we're gonna do is cut these cable ties because we have new ones that came with our kit. So we don't need cable ties on here to do this. So there's that one, there's that one. And then we're gonna also do this little guy on the end right here. Like that, and then I need to, you'll have to pull the cover off of your box, which I've already done, and I've disconnected my fan so that I can run my wiring in there and then plug it in. So I'm gonna flip this guy on its side, like that, and then I'm gonna turn this around so you guys can see what I'm looking at here. Now this is where my top secret way comes in. Because we cut all these, you can actually push this back and it expands it very, very big. So let's go like this. And then I'm gonna turn this this way so you guys can see. And then what we want is, does that hold it better like that? We want the skinny end to be pushed through. So I'm gonna, where's the end of it come to here? What we're gonna do is just notch this so that we can get, this. I don't know if that's tie wrapped. We're gonna undo that tape so that we can get this guy, there we go. Okay, so this guy now, so if we go like this, it will totally get really fat and easy to feed the wire through. So you just gotta make sure you feed it through the right way. We want the small end to go through to the big end. So I'm gonna shove this in as far as I can. The small end goes to our adapter. So now it's about halfway. Now if I pull this 
like this, it should expand big enough that we can just get that. There, you see it there? We're just feeding this through like that till we get the end right there. Success. So now you see, I didn't have to split anything. Other guys are telling you to cut it, whatever. We didn't have to do that. So now I can lift this up like this and you guys can see what we've done here. There it is. So it's already coming up here. Now I'm not going to tie wrap anything yet because wire management comes after. But what I can do is go like this. You can see my wire comes up here. I just want to follow the other wires. So don't let your filament wire get in the way. And then all I'm going to do is plug this guy in here. It'll only go one way. So if it doesn't go the way you're trying to do it, you're probably doing it the wrong way. And we're just going to make sure that it's in tight. And it is just like that. So now this thing can get pulled back up after we've done the wiring on the other end. So next up, I'm going to tip it on its side here. This is not normally how you handle a 3D printer, but that's what we're going to do. So we're going to feed the wire in here like this. And just like that, the wiring is super fantastic. Now, it's a good thing my Z axis limit switch came off because we actually want to remove that like this. And the reason is we actually, this is going to become our Z axis limit switch. And then we just plug this guy into this port right there on our motherboard, just like that. Now that the connections are made, we can make sure we've got enough slack all the way up to where it needs to be. And then we can start tie wrapping everything back into place. So we'll go like this. We're going to pull some of our slack back on this guy like that. I do want a little bit of slack there just so that I can attach this. Where's that guy at? We just need to be able to go like that and get this down here like that. So we'll take one of these. We got a small guy. We're going to just cinch it on here that they gave us and we'll see if that one will hold this better. Okay. And then we can go back to tie wrapping that on there, how it was. So hopefully this one doesn't break on us. If it does, we'll have to get some new ones, but it's not a big, yes, it's going to, of course. So luckily I've got two more twist ties. We're going to just cut it in half like that. And we'll put a twist tie on here like that. And then we'll go around here and put another twist tie on here like that. There we go. So that is the entire install portion. We can put this fan back on, make sure we plug the fan back into the proper connector port on there. And then it is time to load the firmware. So I'm going to take you to the computer and then I will come back and show you how to load that firmware. So the first thing we're going to do is stick our memory card from the device into our computer. So I, you can see I've got some files on here. We're going to take those files off and that way we can delete them because we want to have nothing on the memory card except for our our actual file so the best way i've found to find this is just go and type cr touch firmware and then go to the creality website so this is the one i want i've got the ender 3 cr touch firmware so i've downloaded that it is a zip file if you have a pro or a v2 or a max or whatever you just download the firmware that is right for you, we have an Ender 3 and we have the CR Touch firmware. This one was released as of the 6th of September, 2022. All I'm gonna do is open the file. In here, you're gonna find your main board and, and you would need to know what main board you've got. Now I've got board 4.2.7 and the way I know that is I looked on my main board once you've opened it up, we want to just extract this onto our drive, which is our, in this case, it's the G drive and it's totally empty. So I'm going to say, okay, now it's going to copy that to G and I should see that show up here on my G drive. Now your drive needs to be formatted. Let's look at it here as FAT32. As you can see, this one is here. If you've been using that card on your printer, 
then it's probably already in the format you need. If for some reason it doesn't update, then try a different micro SD card. There's sometimes compatibility issues with the different cards. Once it's on there, that's all we've got to do. So I can just close all of this now and then go to the printer to do that update. So we're going to unplug this from my memory adapter. Then we're going to go over to the printer. So here I am at the printer. We're going to stick that card in just like that. Micro SD is in. We're going to turn the printer on and it will update automatically. So when I turn it on, it'll take a little bit longer to turn on as it loads the firmware. But when it's done, if everything went right, there we go. So that firmware should now be loaded and it should be using our CR touch adapter here. So I should actually end up with some new options. And right off the bat, I see that it's defaulted to Chinese, which is awesome. So if it did go to Chinese, I'm going to show you. And you're on your main screen and you see some Chinese there. And then when you push the menu, you get all of these. and You don't know what to do. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the very bottom. Then I'm going to go up one. I'm going to push the enter button and then you'll have the option to switch to English. So now I'm in English. So now I can see some of the other options that have unlocked on here. So let's see here. Change media, print from media, English and about printer. So let's go to motion. So you've got probe Z offset is now an option and level bed is also an option. I've also got disable steppers, which I had before. So now if I go to auto home, we can watch what this thing does as it tries to home itself because there's no Z. So I'm not sure. Oh, there you go. See, now it dropped that little feeler. Now it's going to ease itself down until that little probe touches the board like that. Now, did you see the light change there? So now it knows where home is right now in the center of the board instead of over here where it used to go to home off of our Z switch. So now we could continue on to the process of leveling our bed. You do want to do a basic bed leveling so that you can try and get it as level as possible. Otherwise, this Z axis is going to be going absolutely crazy trying to adjust all the time. I'm going to level the bed in a different, I don't even know if I'm going to do it in a different video. I just wanted to show you that this is all set up and ready to go now. So now I can put my cover back on, make sure my fans on. And then that is everything I need to do for this thing. And just like that, we've totally pimped out our Ender 3 printer. So you've seen us just install the CR Touch bed leveling kit. Once you've done your system update, as you just saw, you can pop out the memory card. You do not need to leave that file on there. In fact, you shouldn't leave the file on there. And as you heard me say, if you have issues where it's not updating, it could be the card. Try a different card. Even cards that you've used for your printer files sometimes will have problems where it will not actually let the system flash. Now this card, I think came with my printer, so it's it's good that it was supported. In this case, it was supported. The upgrade process was pretty easy. It was a little bit stressful because you only get one shot. This does not have the ability to downgrade. It only upgrades. So if you upgrade the wrong file and you want to downgrade, you just can't, or at least not easily. You also may look at adding aftermarket firmwares. I did not. I used the Creality regular firmware, but a lot of people use aftermarket firmwares. There are aftermarket firmwares that support the uh, CR Touch system, so you don't have to worry about that if that's what you're using. But in future videos, we can look at exactly how this bed leveling system works and how you set it up for the first time. Today we just wanted to install it and get it working and it seems to be doing that just fine. So next videos we're going to look at using it and we're going to see if that He-Man sword that I've been talking about actually ended up working. Hey thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. 
you can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.